In this video, we're going to be looking at this battery by Go Kilowatt Hour. Now, this is a 12.8, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So, is this battery worth your time and money? Let's look at it and find out. So, the first thing you may have noticed about this battery is this battery capacity voltage. Now, to set for lithium iron phosphate, we need to go to setting 3 F. So, by doing that, you can press and hold here. And then we will change the setting to this here, 3-F, press and hold, and there you go. Now we are apparently set for lithium iron phosphate. We are showing 13.5 at 80%. Now during our dismantle part of this video, I will be taking a look if this uh, is actually running through the BMS or if it is just connected to the positive and negative which means it's only going off of voltage. If it is only going off of voltage, it is going to be completely inaccurate. If you guys don't know, the charge curve as well as the discharge curve of lithium iron phosphate in the middle is relatively flat. So for about 80% of the battery's usage, you're not gonna be able to tell by voltage alone what the state of charge is. So if you're anywhere in between 20% and 80%, let's say, or even 10% and 90%, in between there, you're gonna have no idea what you're actually at. So if this is just running off of voltage, it's a novelty, it's non-existent, pretend it's not even there. So looking at the manual of the battery, um, it's actually a really decent manual. They did go through some pretty good like wire gauge sizes, how to hook up in parallel. These batteries can be seriesed up to a 48 volt pack. Um, the only thing that I did notice is that this battery stated on the website is built with pouch cells. Now it's my experience that pouch cells should only be charged at a 0.2 C rate, which means a 100 amp hour battery should only be charged with 20 amps. But they recommend 50 amps of charging on their instructions and they do state that you can do 100 amps, but it's not advised to do it often. Uh, if you look at some of the literature down lower on the website, all of their imagery and everything shows a 20 amp charge, but they say that you can do a recommended charging current of 50 amps. I would not suggest that on pouch cells, I would suggest 20 amps. Another curious thing about the literature on the website as well as in the manual is I don't see any actual protection stated. So it doesn't state that it has high or low current protection, high or low voltage protection, low or high temperature protection. We don't see any actual, but nonetheless, let's run it through its paces. So let's charge it up and see if we have over voltage protection. Okay, I have my bench power supply hooked up and you can see we are charging with five amps. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this voltage and see at what voltage this battery will disconnect. Okay, and it looks like we actually disconnected at exactly 14.4 volts. So we've disconnected 14.4 volts, which means this battery has over voltage protection. Something to note about the screen, as you can see, I'm fully charged 13.9 volts, and it is already saying 89%. The battery capacity voltmeter on the top here has already shown that it's 89% just due to the voltage sag. So with lithium iron phosphate, once you charge it up to full and you stop charging, the voltage is gonna sag down a little bit. It's gonna to go to its resting voltage, which is tricking this into thinking that it's 89% when it's in fact 100. So again, this little thing on the top here is not good for lithium iron phosphate. If this was a lead acid battery, perfect. You can check it through voltage, but with lithium, you cannot. Okay, and I'm ready to perform my test. So we're gonna start by pre-charging the resistors of the inverter unit. Turn on our breaker, turn on our inverter, and let's throw a load on. So we're discharging with 44.2, 44.3. I'm gonna let this run and we'll be back once the test is complete and I will let you know what the amp hour capacity of this battery is. And we are still discharging. You can see I'm at 39%, discharge 60 amps. Now, if we look at the voltmeter, 
it says we have 66 percent so you can see that this is not accurate and we have 103.927 amp hours so we got 3.927 amp hours above the rated capacity so this test is a pass let's open up the battery and see what the insides look like okay luckily around the perimeter here there's little caps where i can access screws so i had a microphone issue during this part of the video but as you can see i've noticed that the screen is actually only off of voltage there's only two wires going to the positive and negative also while i had the case opened i noticed that the wires going to the lid were not properly connected so what this is going to do is going to create a hot spot during charging and discharging which can actually be quite catastrophic if not caught early this was a big disappointment now they did mark onto the actual nuts that they had been torqued and QC'd so they actually put a red mark onto them and you can see there it almost looks like they had a QC qualified mark put onto it and you can tell that I can very easily move those wires around. Here I've started to dig around inside the battery and as you can see we have low density foam and not high density foam. So what can happen is when that foam is crushed for a long period of time it will hold that shape and it doesn't have very good elasticity. So as you can see the battery all around is just has this packing foam inside of it which is not an ideal substitute for packing in the battery cell. Well, I apologize for the bad audio there for a little bit. Okay, let's perform a cold temperature sensor test. So I'm gonna put this probe in a freezing cold ice pack. And we will see at what temperature. So I'm at about minus six, minus seven, minus 10, minus 12. My hand is really starting to get cold. Let's switch hands. Minus 14, I'm gonna put this down on the table. Okay, I'm at minus 14.8, seems to be holding consistent there. And we are still charging, so I'm gonna leave this. Maybe it's just that it's taking a little bit of time to register on the BMS. Okay, I've got minus 15 degrees on this sensor here, and we are still charging. So minus 15 degrees is way below freezing. So I've been holding this here for over a minute and we're still charging. It's minus 15.2 degrees. So cold temperature is a fail. Now let's see if they have cold temperature, but at a much lower temperature than they should have. So for that, I'm gonna be using a duster. When you put it upside down and spray, it gets extremely cold. And we have disconnection. So this BMS parameter is set way too low for actual low temperature protection. It will not protect the cells. Now let's try a heat gun for high temperature protection. Well, we do have pretty good high temperature protection. So that's a bit of a bonus. So that's gonna about wrap it up for the review of this battery pack. So I'm a little disappointed with the packing foam. Um, it's not the greatest quality and that's not the proper type of foam that you use for packing in a battery. Also, these lugs here were loose on the inside of the terminals, which is going to create a hot spot. Uh, I did watch another YouTuber do a high discharge of over 200 amps. So this does not have a high current protection. At least it's not set up properly on the BMS. The low temperature is not set up properly. So they do have a bit of work to do to fix these problems. Also, this display is just a gimmick. It's not actually going to help you. I can't recommend this battery, unfortunately. Let me know what you think in the comments section if you think I've missed something. But overall, a little disappointed in the build quality on this guy. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, there's more content to come in the future, more battery reviews. And I like to see more batteries on the market because this is only going to drive down price with more competition. So that's great. Uh, bring on the batteries and help drive that competition. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe on your way out before you drop down and swipe right to exit this video. 
and uh, hit the like button. It really helps the algorithm on this channel. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Bye.